Hi everyone, my name is Oksana Fetzlock. I'm the Recruitment Specialist in the Faculty of Science. And today I just wanted to give you some information about the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education combined program. Are you potentially thinking of becoming a science teacher? If so, you should definitely consider this combined program because it will allow you to complete two degrees, a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Education in five years of study. So another route to becoming a teacher is you could certainly complete a science degree and then pursue an education after degree, but that would actually take a little bit longer at six years. So this shaves off one year and you receive two degrees. You can enter into this program directly out of high school or at most after a year of post-secondary education. And I'll touch on that in a few slides. This is to teach science at the secondary level. So this differs from a regular Bachelor of Education degree because here your major and minor will have to be in a science area. area. You actually cannot minor in any other subject area. Another thing to consider is that this is considered a specialization program. So you are going to be following a very structured course curriculum for the five years, and you'll have to maintain a higher GPA in this program than you would in any of our other programs like general science. So although this program is restrictive, um, there are some benefits because obviously you graduate with two degrees in five years. Some alternatives to consider if maybe you're not looking to have such a restrictive program or have more options for electives would be to consider doing a science degree first and then doing an after degree in education. So what are the possible combinations that you can study? You can study any of the following as your major, biological sciences, mathematical sciences, or physical sciences. And then your minor would be in any one of those areas. Again, mathematical sciences, physical sciences or biological sciences. If you choose to have the physical sciences major, then that's when you can have a physics or chemistry concentration. So you would just pick to take more of those courses if that's the area that you're interested in. So you can see here, it's a very science heavy focused program. So what do you need to be admitted into this program from high school? Obviously we're looking for five high school subjects. So we're looking for English 30-1, Math 30-1, two science courses at the 30 level. Um, so you can use biology 30 and chemistry 30, physics 30, math 31, or computing science, five credit. However, this program, because of the courses, you definitely need biology 30 and chemistry 30 to you know, do well in this program, be able to take the course sequencing. And then the fifth subject could be one of 100, the humanities at the 30 level, fine arts, language, et cetera. All that information is on the website. If by chance you are considering transferring into this program and you are doing a first year of university elsewhere, transfer is possible. However, it is pretty strict. So in the U of A calendar, it states that transfer is normally not possible after a year. So in order to transfer into this program, make sure that you take 24 to 30 credits in your fall and winter terms and have a GPA of 2.3 or higher. If you've done two years of post-secondary, it's likely not possible for you to transfer just because this program is so structured with the course sequencing that you're essentially not on track to finish the degree in five years anymore. So if that's the case for you, it would be better to finish your science degree and then pursue an after degree in education. So again, this is a really great program and option for you if you want to teach science at the secondary level. You love science and you don't want to teach anything else. Um, if you want to teach, you know, languages or other subjects like social or even art, then that's when you would consider going into the Faculty of Education as opposed to the combined. So if you have that passion for science, then this could be a really great option for you. And if you have any questions for us, you can email us at science.recruiting at uoberta.ca. And you can also book online advising appointments if that would be of interest. Know that this program you will start in the Faculty of Science. You have to meet our competitive admission requirements to, to enter this program. And you'll spend the first two years in this program in the Faculty of Science. And then after that, you'll transfer over to the Faculty of Education for your remaining three years. And my colleague, Erin, will speak to the experience on the education side of the degree um, right after this video. Thank you so much.
Hello, everyone. My name is Erin Moulton, and I'm the recruitment coordinator with the Faculty of Education here at the University of Alberta. And I'm going to talk to you more about the education side of the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education combined degree program. Uh, so hopefully this will answer a lot of your questions about this part of the program. So let's start with some Faculty of Education fun facts. Basically by getting a Bachelor of Education from the University of Alberta, whether you do the secondary route, which is what the BSc B.Ed program is, or if you were to do the elementary route, uh, you will be eligible to uh, teach kindergarten through grade 12, all subjects in Alberta curriculum schools. You are more likely to get a job in what your specialty is in, but the certification is for all subjects K to 12. So you're not necessarily limited. It's just a matter of proving you're the best applicant for the job. Uh, the Northwest Territories and Nunavut uh, are on Alberta curriculum as well. Uh, we were actually the first established faculty of education in Canada. We were established back in 1942. We're ranked number three for faculties of education in Canada, and we're also number 44 in the world. So if you're getting a B.Ed. from the U of A, you're going to be well recognized everywhere. Uh, even though we have a fairly big program, uh, the average class size in our faculty is only 27 students, which is comparable to a high school class. So, and typically when you're going into the end of your degree program, you're going to be in those higher level education courses where you're with other students in secondary and other with other students in your major or minor. Uh, so you're really uh, studying alongside your future colleagues, which is really neat. Uh, students in our program have to complete a minimum, a minimum of 14 weeks of student teaching in Alberta curriculum schools. So that typically takes place as your two student teaching terms at the end of your program, but we'll touch on that a little bit more later on. I wanted to touch on the salary calculation for a teacher since it's a frequently asked question. And these numbers are taken from the Alberta Teachers Association website uh, for Edmonton Public Schools. So it's just giving you an idea of where the salary scales fall. Essentially, your salary as a teacher will be calculated based on your years of post-secondary education and your years of teaching experience. So if you do the five-year combined degree, you're going to be a little bit higher on the salary scale likely than the four-year folks. Uh, the difference is uh, between $59,000 about to $62,000. Um, and then I also wanted to bring this up because you're not necessarily stuck at a certain level of the salary scale uh, if you don't want to be. So if you graduate and start teaching and you're assessed on the five-year mark of the salary scale, you can definitely boost yourself up later on. Many of our graduates come back and take courses for interest or get another credential, maybe a master's program. So that's definitely possible. And then as you'll see, uh, your years of teaching experience also make a difference and you get a raise every year. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about those education courses I mentioned. So years three to five, you'd be in the Faculty of Education, still taking some science courses, but that's when you start focusing a little bit more on the higher level education courses as well. Uh, so the introductory courses, as you may already know, EDU 100, 210, and 211. The, those are those introductory courses that students, um, all students in our program take, whether you're in elementary or secondary or the combined degree program. So they're really great to lay that foundation knowledge uh, before you get into years four and five, let's say, of the combined degree and before your student teaching terms. EDU 100 is a really uh, neat course because there's also a practical component with it. So you would be able to uh, volunteer. Uh, it's with com community service learning on campus. Uh, so there's going to be a related volunteer experience that you do with youth, uh, not necessarily in a classroom. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, but that's, it's just an intro experience that you can get right away. It helps uh, get your feet wet uh, in the profession and uh, looks good on a resume. It's a great experience. Uh, it just really adds to that course a lot. Um, in, within the program, you'll also have two major curriculum courses during your field experience terms. Uh, so we're going to be teaching you how to teach your major in Alberta curriculum schools for the grade seven to 12 age range. 
So you're going to be nice and prepared before you go out on your student teaching. And you'll also have a course where we teach you how to teach your minor as well. Uh, so you'll get some great background knowledge there. We do place you uh, for your field experiences in your major subject area as well. So it's important to note that. That's why you're having those two major curriculum courses during field experience. Uh, for the combined degree, your introductory field experience, so that first one, is typically taken in year four. And the advanced field experience is taken in your final year in year five. So talking a little bit more about field experience, uh, like I said, students have to complete a minimum of 14 weeks of student teaching in an Alberta curriculum school. So that first field experience I just mentioned, the introductory field experience, it'll consist of about eight weeks of condensed courses first. Uh, so you'll write the finals early. Um, you'll be placed with a school within that time frame, And you'll also have three observation days before you go out and do your first student teaching term. So you'll write those finals and then for the last five weeks or so or 25 days, your student teaching full time uh, with your mentor teacher and you're working up to about 50% of the teaching load in that one. And then your advanced field experience is a similar concept. So you're still taking condensed courses, but they're even shorter. And then you'll have about nine weeks of student teaching at the end of the term, uh, for, so 45 days of student teaching. And you're building up to 80 to 90% of the teaching load in that one. So you're not having to do courses and student teaching at, uh, at the same time. That's a frequently asked question. Uh, so you can focus on preparing to go out in the classroom and then again, focus on your practical experience in the classroom. Uh, another frequently asked question, we place you in two separate schools. Uh, so one for your IFX, one for your AFX. So you get some uh, good connections that way. Uh, you can't solicit your own placement. We'll do all the placements for you. Uh, you'll be placed within your major um, and all of that stuff. So you don't have to worry about getting that. And on top of these two field experience terms that you have to take within your program, we do also offer, uh, it's a new initiative, an early field experience where you can get some experience um, shadowing in the classroom. So kind of like those observation days that I suggested before. And we also have an extra field experience course called edFX 490 that a lot of students take as an educational elective. And that course, we can actually place you in an alternative environment. Uh, so it's not quite as strict with the certification requirements. So we could place you in an early childhood classroom, for example, uh, or an outreach school. Uh, so you get a little bit extra experience, looks really good on a resume. So let's talk about teaching certification next, uh, which a lot of you will probably be looking into down the line. So essentially, like I mentioned before, uh, with Alberta education, you'd be certified to teach K to 12 all subjects in Alberta curriculum schools. As I also mentioned, you'll also be more, uh, more likely to get a job in your specialization uh, that you take with your Bachelor of Education. That's simply because the courses you're taking are specifically designed uh, for teaching grade seven to grade 12, for your major and minor, uh, your student teaching terms will be in your major subject area. So you'll have that experience to fall back on when you're applying for jobs, but you're not necessarily limited either. Uh, we also have Alberta curriculum schools abroad. So we have 14 currently around the world where uh, they're hiring our graduates because you have to be certified to teach in Alberta to teach at these schools. So that's a really neat option. If you're considering teaching abroad, I'd recommend uh, either doing a study abroad. Uh, we have um, some opportunities typically in the spring summer that you can go get an experience. We have one in uh, South Korea that's not for credit, but it's an international experience you can get and add to your resume. Uh, we also have the opportunity, if it's available to you, to do your advanced field experience at one of the Alberta curriculum schools. So our partners right now are in Macau, China, Bermuda, Guadalajara, and Cambodia. So if you're interested in going international, that's something you can be thinking about down the line. And basically, when you're applying for certification, that will happen when you're still in our program. So it's all ready to go when you're done. So in your final year, uh, 
basically what you'd be doing is submitting a handy graduation check form. It's just a quick Google, check, Google form that we offer. And your student advisor will basically check to make sure that you're good to go to graduate uh, with your final registration. So either way, even if you're not applying for a certification, we'll have your back and uh, let you know if you're good to go or not. So definitely recommend you remember that when the time comes. But when you apply for certification, which you would do after that, um, you would essentially do that about two to three months before you're done your program. So in your final term, um, this is if you are planning to teach in Alberta after you graduate. Some of our graduates go on to different provinces and that's completely fine. Uh, so if you're wanting to go teach in BC, you'd wanna to talk to the BC Ministry of Education instead. But if you're applying to teach in Alberta and you want to start right away, you'd apply two to three months before you're done. Um, basically, at the end of each term, our faculty will send a list of approved graduates signed by our dean uh, to Alberta Education, recommending them for certification. So essentially, if you want to teach once you're done all your requirements, like the day after your student teaching is done, you have a job and you want to go out and teach, you can do that actually uh, before. Uh, so this would happen before our graduate, graduate student list gets sent to Alberta Education. So that usually takes six to eight weeks. Uh, so you can actually gain a temporary teaching authority and teach right after your final grades are in. So you have to have an application into Alberta Education, uh, and it has to be acknowledged that you'll get certification once you're done your program. And then you just need a letter from the school board that's offered you employment. And uh, this happens fairly frequently. Uh, so it's a process that we'll definitely walk you through when you're in the final year of your program. So don't worry about remembering all this, but this is just kind of how it works. And then uh, going back to that salary conversation, we had teacher qualification services evaluates a teacher's education for salary purposes. So they'll go through your credits and just make sure they're putting you on the right level for the salary scale. Uh, so that's uh, the third place you'd be applying to uh, for graduation. So the U of A, Alberta Education, and then teacher qualification services. Uh, it sounds like a lot, it's not too bad. Uh, and we have uh, your advisor and uh, tons of staff that will help you along the way. So that's all I have to say for the education side of things. Hopefully this answers some of the questions that are at the top of your mind. Um, next, we're going to hear from one of our current students, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education students, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about her experience and why she decided to do the program. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name's Leah. I'm a fifth year student here at the U of A taking a combined science and education degree program. Uh, I have a major in biology and a minor in mathematics, and I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys today. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there in person or as much in person as is possible right now, but hopefully I can still provide you some helpful insights into the program. So I personally decided to pursue this degree program because I knew that I wanted to go to university directly out of high school, but I really was just unsure of what exactly I wanted to take and I liked the flexibility that this program provided. Uh, I've always known that I wanted to work with children. Uh, I really enjoyed science all throughout my high school career. So this program felt like a really good fit. It provided me a broad scope of options. So that's something to consider. Um, I think I'll start by just giving you an overview of each side of the program. So first the science component and then the education component. So I can't speak for all combinations of major and minors, but for mine specifically, I found that the first two years were really quite general. Uh, I did a lot of intro biology, different intro chemistries, and then um, quite a bit of math. And then beyond that second year, it's a lot less prescribed. So you have a lot more options in the courses that you take. Um, I personally chose to take quite a broad range of biology courses. You can specialize a little more, but I chose to take some genetics and some endocrinology, some ecology. And I really just did that because as a science teacher, you're expected to teach a broad scope of material. And I felt that this was the best way that I could meet that. That might not be the best way for everyone, but for me personally, that was why I did it. Um, and so I will say that the science side of the program has been more intense than the education side. It's very rewarding. Um, but just, just prepare yourself for that. So you might need to change some study habits and there are lots of resources on campus available to you to help with that. So um, 
for instance, one that was really helpful to me was the Decimal Robinson Center. They help with first and second year math courses. And that was a, <laughs> that was a big help to me because math was definitely the hardest transition for me personally. So then the education side of the program is similar to the science side in the sense that it also starts quite broad and then narrows as you get further into the program. So um, the first two years you, you do take, you know, the more general courses. In the last three, I've found that it's been more math specific, more bio specific, you'll take some curriculum courses. So those are really helpful. Uh, because this program is fitting two degrees into the five years, you don't have a ton of room to fit in any extra education options. So those could be things like uh, a course to teach you how to make individualized program plans or maybe a math teaching specific course. Um, so that's just something to consider. If those courses interest you, you might need to take them in a spring or summer term and an, an advisor could help you sort that out. Um, I've also really enjoyed the education side of the program because generally my courses have been quite a lot smaller than all of my science courses. Uh, so you make a lot of really good friendships, education connections, uh, and it's just, it makes a really meaningful university experience. So that is one major plus of the education side of the program. Um, for the first two years, you're technically in the Faculty of Science, and then for the last three, you're in the Faculty of Education. And really that transition wasn't super noticeable aside from the fact that it changes where you go for help. So, um, <laughs> oops, excuse me. Um, so in the first two years, you would go to the Faculty of Science office to get assistance uh, and advising. And then for the last three years, you'll go to the Faculty of Education for anything of those, like any concerns like that. Um, there have been so many things about the program that I've enjoyed. I've, I've really liked to be able to take a broader range of subjects, I think, it suited my personality. It's given me a really, you know, a wide base of friends. I have friends that are in business and friends that are in science and friends that are in education. And it's nice to have those different relationships and connections. Um, the other thing is it's, it's a busy program. <laughs> like absolutely it is, but it is so, so rewarding, uh, you know, to be able to finish a busy semester and say like, I did that. It's, it's awesome. Um, it's also really good. I like this program because it's made me more confident in the body of knowledge that I have. So, you know, one of the requirements of teachers is that you have uh, a depth of knowledge. And I think that having the science component of this program really makes me more confident in that aspect. Um, in terms of practical experiences. So likely you'll have a volunteering component in your first year education course. I did. That is five years ago now. So bear that in mind. Um, so that's a really good experience to have right off the bat. The way that this program set up, uh, your practicums are in your fourth and fifth year. That can be changed. You talk to an advisor about that. But for me personally, it was supposed to be in my first practicum in my fourth year. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that because of the circumstances going on right now. Uh, so I was really grateful to have some other professional experiences to make up for that in a way. Um, so I personally, <laughs> I personally volunteered in my high school biology teacher's classroom, mostly did some observation and some field trip days, but that was really good to look at a classroom from a teacher perspective rather than from a student perspective that we're also used to right now. Um, and then aside from that, there's a group on campus called U School. I volunteer with them. It's really nice because it's flexible. They don't make you commit a certain amount of hours and you do have some busy semesters in this program. So they were a really good one for me. You still get to interact with kids. Uh, you get to go around the campus with them. So it's, it's a good experience to have and lower commitment if that's a concern that you have. Um, one other thing that I wholeheartedly think you should take advantage of is the Education Students Association is absolutely fabulous about putting on professional development sessions. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, so those are things like uh, sessions run in conjunction with the Alberta Teachers Association about working with parents, uh, things in conjunction with the uh, education, or education, Edmonton Public Schools for, um, uh, like planning your degree to get hired. So things of that sort have been really, really good. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, they, 
what I've found for me personally is I've had some semesters that have been quite science heavy and I don't always feel connected to that education component of the program. And so these professional development sessions have been really beneficial for me to just feel, um, you know, engaged with that education side of the program. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to plug is the education mentorship program. So I've been part of the program for the last two years and I've been paired up with first year students and we're basically just here for anything you need. So, you know, do you want a campus tour? Uh, are you needing advice about what to do about textbooks? Um, do you just need to talk? We're here for that. And uh, if you need anything beyond what we can provide you, we have resources that we can refer you to. So if you're considering this program, and I hope that you are, uh, consider checking out the Education Mentorship Program.